we'll, we'll get. I guess we can actually start talking about a bit about the stuff that you're actually doing. So we did sort of bring up Unity before, but why make? Obviously, you like the whole Ubuntu thing, and that like that makes sense why you decided to go and actually make the remix and then make the actual. Um, I was going to say spin flavor. Uh, flavor is the Ubuntu terminology. <laughs> um, <laughs> why actually go and make a distro for it instead of just take Unity and then just you know patch it, update it, and get it working nicely with uh, you know make changes people want to see made with it? Why actually go that extra step and make a distro for it as well? Um, because um, first off, I wanted to make the experience easy for new users, you know, just to get started. But just to get started with it because right now most distributions offer gonna you know, um, kte all of that stuff out of the box gonna you know, kte mate all of that and um it's just gonna first of you lying behind the other just just up uh, just up environments in that regard because mm -hmm. it's, first of it's gonna be hard for people it's gonna be hard for newbies to get started using it because that is the experience i want i want people to have a to have a good first install experience for example and, and i would like to make tweaks i would like to make tweaks to unity um that would be you know there would be specific to ubuntu unity however they will result they do result in a good user experience because unity is after all our primary target is ubuntu even though it's just supported on fedora and it was supported on arch i have to update the port by the way since i mentioned the arch port i have to update that to use the latest unity version but um yeah, I mean, I want I want it to be uh, I want it to be a good user experience, you know, for people that just want to try Unity Seven, because that's gonna get that's what's gonna get people hooked on to the Unity Seven experience. We don't want people to use to use a blue configured version of Unity, you know, if Unity if Unity just made it switch to the copper and then you know people just started trying it and they just started complaining about how broken it was and how um, how no one you know how why someone is even maintaining it because of how broken it is mm -hmm. you know it doesn't even make sense to maintain it anymore mm -hmm. we're gonna to have tons of people saying that if we just um offer it as a package for other distributions to include to maintain and include so mm -hmm. you know we decided to go the extra step of uh, maintaining it mm -hmm. um and maintaining a distribution a flavor of a distribution for that purpose so mm -hmm. yeah i mean that was the primary goal so Unity. basically provides like a an easy testing ground for someone who wants to get like this is the experience that you want people to have with it precisely <laughs> yeah sort of like gnome OS, but actually usable for users because gnome OS too is but um they don't guarantee it you know for but i was using it in case anything goes wrong mm -hmm. in case they release alpha quality software and something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so i'm sure i'm sure a lot of people are kind of interested in what actually goes into well, firstly, making a distro like this, and then making or getting to that uh, position where it's an official flavor of Ubuntu. So, like, what? I guess we'll start with like, what is it? What goes into actually making that initial remix, that initial distro based on Ubuntu? I mean, first off, we had to write our own ISO builder and a bunch of other scripts for that mm -hmm. because um, there was some documentation on that, but it was woefully outdated. Mm -hmm. um, so I just did a bunch of builder tools, uh, utilities for that purpose, mm -hmm. um, and I just made those public on GitHub and GitLab so that it's easy for anyone new to get started. Um, like, you know, I mean, even in the most new distributions, so if we talk about... If we talk about Ubuntu Cinnamon, which is actually older than Ubuntu Unity, however, um, because first of all, um, they were using they were using a fork of a builder of the builder used by Ubuntu Budgie, which itself was based on Elementary OS's builder, and it was just heavily broken um, on newer versions of Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. Vanilla OS managed to patch it out surprisingly for the release. But yeah, that was just an absolute mess. Um, and so, you know, yeah, um, when the lowest V2, I think they're actually using that builder somehow. Um, yeah, I mean, that must be a client. But yeah, I mean, that, that was an absolute mess. They um, have a configuration where they know it works and they never touch it. Yeah. That's, that's how. Exactly. Yeah, because live build, um, the build, the, the build they're the using right now, the one that Ubuntu Cinnamon 2U was using, and mm -hmm. a bunch of new distributions, in fact, are using that one. Um, yeah, it just it's built to support a bunch of options that Ubuntu 11.04 and Ubuntu 10.10 .10 supported. So, um, 
yeah if um you know i just i just release a bunch of scripts and you know um quite a few projects um and then moved over to it. So a bunch of cinnamon uh, started using that. And the first release of Vanilla always used that script, the one I uh, pushed to GitHub, you know, the one we were using for Ubuntu Unity. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, yeah, um, that was that was just one of the clearest challenges because um, there just weren't any, there just weren't any decent uh, also building utilities out there, image building utilities, because, um, you know, Ubuntu has its own stuff. Ubuntu has, um, has a bunch of uh, launchpad specific CI for that purpose, but that just isn't that just isn't usable for any distribution developer, you know, mm-hmm. or any newbie that just wants to um, build their own Linux of a distribution. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean that's that was one of the greatest challenges that, and then um, on Ubuntu especially, um, this isn't this isn't a criticism of other distributions that let you develop pins. Um, this is something particular to Ubuntu, mm-hmm. the packaging situation is just um it's just uh it's just terrible um okay. because uh unlike unlike arch where you have to where you can just set pkg build files for that purpose you know mm-hmm. even though um first off the experience on arch isn't the best either because packages keep packages keep getting upgraded and then stuff takes in your packages pick and you have to you have to stay up to date for the packages right the only uh, the only compatibility um compatibility baseline for arch is the current packages there's no like exactly any like if you're not supporting the current packages, your package is broken. Yeah, because hate Manja for what you will. At least they have a stable base. They do at least have um they do have a stable list. You know they have uh, they have a stable set of packages <laughs> that they um that they release every couple of weeks. So mm-hmm. even though it isn't the best for AUR packages for packages that are actually into the repositories, it's just a perfectly fine experience. It's stable mm-hmm. after all, mm-hmm. and um. Yeah, I mean, on Ubuntu, however, um, it's quite opposite. Uh, uh, the issues are, you know, um, where it just makes it hard for you to package stuff because it is a good experience for the user. However, for developers and packages, mm-hmm. yeah, because it's required, it has a bunch of uh, archaic um, file dependencies. You don't have a simple, you don't have a simple uh, packaging format for it. Instead, the documentation is spread across various uh, websites and. Um, yeah, even though there are projects like MakeTab, which is supposed to bring Arch-like packages to Ubuntu, you know, the NPR, that is the thing. So that allows you to write PKG builds. And it, in fact, allows you to use PKG builds on the AUR and just use them on Ubuntu once you create oh. the dependencies. So package names in the dependencies. Um, hmm. You know, once you do that stuff, um, it allows you to, you know, it allows you to use any packages from the AUR, you know, and that kind of stuff. And even though it might not be the most stable experience, as long as you do, you know, it makes it makes the packaging experience better for, uh, you know, for developers and packages in general, because mm-hmm. uh, you don't have to deal with the Debian packaging system. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's another thing. So, yeah, I mean, these two were the greatest challenges, especially the latter one, because packaging is just, yeah, um, it's just not worth it, you know, to... I think this is why Snaps came along in Ubuntu because um, um, Snaps just make it easy. Because his thing, even in the case of flat packs, mm-hmm. developers. I have heard this from several developers. You know, um, they are they are all of the opinion that even though flat packs, um, even do flat pa- even the flat flat packs do beat um, Snaps and a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the developer experience, Snaps are just doing better because you just have a simple Snap types of YAML. Um, if it's basic YAML, you just need to you just need to specify the name. Um, the plugs, mm-hmm. and you know, you just need to mention the files, all of that stuff. It is really simple. It is a really simple system, and even though it may be a bit of a wild cotton, um, like with the Play Store and the App Store, of course, mm-hmm. um, the developer experience too is pretty similar. It is really easy for you to just create a snap and put it on the put it on the snap show for someone coming from the Android world of development mm-hmm. or the iOS world of development, you know. It just makes it easy for you. Anyway, I think I think I have gone way off topic. <laughs> no, it's just fine. I, you clearly are very, <laughs> very passionate about the issues you've had with packaging. Yeah. 